The reading this morning is taken from Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. These are the inspired words for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sometimes we need to hear the Beatitudes and imagine who Jesus was referring to as he preached in first century Palestine. Sometimes we want to understand that the only equivalent to poor in spirit in the ancient literature occurs in the war scroll. That is the Dead Sea Scrolls, where it speaks of those who have been beaten down by oppressive systems, poor in spirit. Mourning in ancient Israel meant not only the loss of a loved one, but the brokenness of the community due to repressive systems. The meek were those who were vulnerable to the powers that be. And throughout the scriptures, those who hunger and thirst are those who have been marginalized. All of these will be blessed. Sometimes we might want to hear the words of Isaiah that very well may have informed this formula that Jesus uses when the prophet says, do not fear for you will not be ashamed. Do not be discouraged, for you will not suffer disgrace, for you will forget, forget the shame of your past. Sometimes we read the text and consider those people in the world today, in our own communities, those who are persecuted, mourning, oppressed, and Maybe those who are owning their privilege and realize that it is our job to work, to bring about the blessing. Sometimes we want to ponder the Beatitudes as they are placed in this longer three-chapter sermon on the symbolic mountain written by Jesus in it. He gives us the Lord's Prayer, the golden rule, tells us to judge not, tells us we are the light of the world and we are the salt of the earth and more. And sometimes we want to remember the Beatitudes in Monty Python's Life of Brian, that blessed are the Greeks, who were hardly meek, and blessed are the cheesemakers, And sometimes we simply need to hear that we are blessed. Not only when our spirits are lacking, when we're mourning for months on end, when we are meek and vulnerable and burnt out and lonely and isolated, not only when we are fearful and ashamed, but always by the virtue of our baptism. Blessed because the promises of God's are ours. We spend the first and formative years of our lives earning grades that tell us how smart we are rather than how we are smart. We are measured for what we know and how well we can articulate that. I remember getting in trouble in kindergarten for not 
being able to draw a straight line. And it's interesting that to this day, I still can't draw, walk, argue, think, or preach for that matter in a perfectly straight line. But does anyone tell us that we are blessed? If we are good students and make the honor roll and take honors classes and graduate with honors, we get into good schools, even the Ivy League, if we can afford them or maybe we earn scholarships or we get rejected. We try to earn degrees, to get a job, to earn a living. We're interrogated about our experience. We apply to qualify for a mortgage, some of those subprime. We are interrogated about our finances. Maybe we get the job and maybe we get rejected. Does anyone tell us that we are blessed? If we get the job, we work for raises and promotions and some of us watch, others pass us by. We defend our thesis, we work for tenure, we work to be ordained, we work to prove ourselves, our worth, our value, who we are. Does anyone tell us that we are blessed? I am delighted to remind you that there is one place we go where this is not the case where your right to exist is declared, where you matter, are qualified, every bit of you, where you can be precisely who you are and how you were created to be, already accepted, already honored, already a seat at the banquet, blessed, blessed, to be in relationship to a God of love who promises life, full and abundant, on earth as it is in heaven. Blessed to be in relationship to a God who promises a life that is eternal, here and hereafter, already and not yet. Blessed to be in relationship. Blessed because we are Mara. We are blessed because we have loved. We are blessed to be here to remember. We are blessed to join our loved ones now at the heavenly banquet where they sit and feast with us this morning. You are blessed. Amen.